two questions, kind of. Oh, my name's Lana. Hi, Lana. Um, what's your favorite role that you've ever played? Uh, that's a tough one. I really like them all. I mean, they're all, yeah. I tend to go back and look at uh, jobs I've done, like most people look at their family photo albums, and I think, oh yeah, that's when I was in Vancouver, and that's when I was in Africa. Uh, I've gotten, I've had an opportunity to travel all over the world and work with incredible people, and, and continually try to challenge myself each and every time. I think that's the one thing I, I really look for is in the next job I take is which one scares me the most, which one should I really explore because I have the most resistance to it. Um, so each character, in a sense, is sort of cathartic because I'm breaking through inhibitions or fears that I have going into it. So they all become really special. But which one is my favorite? Uh, Dark Carter. Uh, he changed my life. I walked on that show at 22 and left it at 38, so he and I spent the most time together. Your part two. Um, I was just wondering, I know that famous people get a lot of gifts. I was wondering what your favorite gift you've ever gotten from a fan is. Uh, that's another great question. Well, I mentioned years ago that I had a Noah's Ark collection, and uh, that opened the floodgates for about five or six years. I got Noah's Arks from all of them. <laughs> Noah's Arks, door stops, menorahs. You, I mean, you would be amazed at the different things you can make out of a Noah's Ark. Um, but my favorite thing I've ever received that's a tough, some people do some incredible artwork. I've seen some beautiful sort of portraits done of me. I think what my favorite thing would be. Oh, I, of course. I was doing a play in Los Angeles with uh, a guy named Peter Berg, who's now a big director. He used to be an actor on Chicago Hope. You know Pete? Uh, great guy. We were doing this two-hander, two-character play, and I went to the theater one day and to get my mail, and they said, you've got a package. And I opened up the package, and somebody had sent me from Maine, two live Maine lobsters. <laughs> and there I am in the theater, I've got no place to put these lobsters. Uh, so I put them in the refrigerator that was on the set of the stage, you know, which was plugged in. And my character at one point, he holds me hostage and I'm chained up to a couch. And at one point, Pete went to the refrigerator and these things had gotten out of the box. <laughs> and, one of the, and he didn't know that I put them in there. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life, watching Pete Berg try to negotiate these two lobsters. <laughs> and the audience could see. You know, so that was the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Alright, we've got one last... The punchline to that story is Tony Edwards had given me a housewarming gift of a saltwater fish tank like two weeks before and I hadn't even bought a fish for it yet. I had somebody come, at, come out and calibrate the whole thing so that it was, uh, but then I took the lobsters home and they lived in there for like a year. <laughs> okay, one last question for Noah Wiley. Hi, my name's Emily. Hi. Um, so my favorite episodes of, that might be really close my thing. <laughs> um, so my favorite episodes of ER are the ones where you were over in Africa. Yeah, mine too. Fishing. Um, what are your own personal thoughts on the Doctors Without Borders and the humanitarian efforts going on over there and the dangers that those people are facing right now? Well, that whole storyline came about because, uh, I forget which season it was, we all used to get contacted by a lot of different charities, organizations, and one of the ones that contacted me that I was most intrigued by was one called Doctors of the World that were kind of an American-based version of Doctors Without Borders, which was based in France. And at the time, we were engaged in our action in Kosovo, and Doctors of the World were running two of the larger refugee camps in Scobia, Macedonia, taking these Kosovo Albanians that were streaming across the border and giving them medical treatment, tents, and that sort of thing. And they asked me if I wanted to come over and watch the kind of work that they did uh, so I could come back and fundraise for them. And I just felt sort of that call of conviction. I was sort of nervous to go, but I went. And I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, it was a camp of 10,000 displaced people, all living in tents. It was old women, it was old men, and it was children, because all the men that were my age were either fighting or dead. And these people had been through unbelievable hardships just to land in this IDP camp. And they were being treated by like six or seven doctors, treating a population of 10,000, who had literally a table this size of medical supplies. So all they were really able to offer was palliative care. They could hold hands and they could put compresses and they could sort of listen to stories and listen to testimonials, which was a lot of the healing process, which is people being able to share their story. 
And I was so profoundly moved by what I was seeing these guys, these doctors do, because they were all general practitioners and ER docs from all over America who just took time off to go and do this kind of work, purely volunteerism. Then I came back and I talked to John Wells, our executive producer, and I said, we should really do this because the ranks that make up these uh, medical relief triage organizations are mostly ER docs. Uh, so John got really interested in that idea, and the first one we did was about the Belgian Congo, and the second one we did was about Darfur. Uh, the first one we shot in Hawaii, doubling the Belgian Congo. The second one we actually went to Africa and filmed uh, in South Africa and in the Kalahari Desert on the border with Namibia. And those were my favorite episodes. There was the most that John Carter grew as a character, and it was the most influence that I ever had into a storyline. It was the most aligned that my personal politics and my creative instincts ever got. So it was great. I mean, I have the utmost respect for those people and still continue to support two or three of those organizations. Good question. That was fantastic. I didn't have to do any work. I just sat back and relaxed. I have one question. Uh, we, we ask it with a lot of the clients so that you guys get to know them better. Noah, if you could have any five people to dinner, dinner alive, who would they be? Oh, man. How much preparation do you usually give people for that kind of question? I don't. This is the whole point. We want to see you sweat. <laughs> Top five living or dead. From all of history, that's impossible. Uh, all right, let me think. How many are Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, here, think about it for a minute. Were, were you guys not blown away by the fact that he could remember that speech? I uh, yeah. uh, But I can't remember who five people I want to have to do with. <laughs> And that's the toll that my profession takes, everybody. Um, I don't know, I'd probably pick five people from history. Probably five different periods of history. That's a great question. I don't know, I have to think about that one. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull a Will Patton. Will Patton at, at the San Diego Comic Con got asked a question that he didn't come, could come up with the answer. He goes, that's a very good question. I'm going to write that in my notebook. <laughs> All he said on the map. So, oh, that's a very good question. I'm going to write that in my notebook. <laughs> well, you're going to have to think about it. And what I want is 10 people, 10 random people to come to the signing table today and find out what the answer is. But I want you all to tweet it. All right, fair enough. But, but where? Uh, where? He's not on Twitter. He's not no, on Twitter. well, no, I want you guys to tweet it so that oh, you okay. all... You have to join Twitter. Exactly. Oh, I am on Twitter. <laughs> if, if anyone else has any non-stumping questions, you can stop by Noah's table. There's no purchase required to say hi. Give it up for Noah Wiley! Thank you very much. Really great to be here. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your questions.